Hello, everybody. We're back. It's original recipe. It's Bridget and Mike. And today we have our soft magnetics hard topics episode where we're going to go over some of the key questions that we've been getting in the comments section. Um, so the first question we're going to go over is people know that we can stack our ferrite cores, uh, but what happens if you mix materials like a 31 and a 43 core stacked together? Basically, exactly what you think. Um, you can wind up with something sort of between the materials. So this is something that gets done that we've seen quite a few times uh, where let's say you have to cover low and high frequency of multiple noise sources or uh, commonly if you're just trying to create a solution for immunity where you don't know what noise uh, is going to be needing to be attenuated in the application, you can do something along the lines of um, you know, mixing like a 75 material core that gets you into hundreds of kilohertz range into a couple megahertz with something like a 31 material core that's going to uh, extend out to a couple hundred megahertz to a 61 that gets you into the gigahertz range. Um, you know, it's, it's going to be, you know, if you have a certain amount of space, let's say you have... Uh, three inches to work with of real estate on the cord, having, you know, a one inch core of each of those materials, you're not going to get as much attenuation at one specific frequency. If you had, you know, a three inch core, of one material, um, but it's going to provide a lot of attenuation over different ranges and all the materials overlap to some degree. So you'll notice with the ratings of the materials, um, Something like a 75 material has some overlap with a 31, 31 has some overlap with a 61. So they'll kind of add up, I suppose you could say, in those in-between frequencies. Um, something like 61 is going to do very little for you down in the hundreds of kilohertz range. It's all inductive reactants down there on that material, and it doesn't have a whole lot of it being low permeability. And conversely, up at high frequencies, 75 is not going to do a lot in the 100 megahertz range because most of the properties have dropped off on the complex perm curve. But it's a valid strategy. Yeah. And what if we took a suppression material and a power material? Um, you would have... Well, <laughs> it depends what you're trying to do with it, but you, you could potentially have um, a really mediocre power application or a really mediocre suppression application because um, the power material is not going to be so great at suppression and the suppression material is not going to be so great at power. Okay. So now you guys know. Um, Could be a sp good space heater though because the suppression material will get real hot in the power application. Okay. Remember that for winter. Why do split cores attenuate at a slightly higher frequency? Uh, well, they can. They don't always attenuated much higher frequencies but basically it has to do with the um, effective permeability of the core so in solid core the effective permeability is the permeability of the material uh, assuming everything was produced correctly uh, in a split core you have a gap um, we do a lot to try to minimize that gap here at Ferret. We cut the um, you know, we cut the surface, the mating surfaces, in a grinding process to make them really flat and parallel with each other to minimize that gap. And on some materials, we'll go even further and polish it to eliminate any ridges on the surface. Um, but there is always going to be a gap present that's going to reduce the effective permeability and shift the performance out to higher frequencies. Um, you could kind of actually play around with that deliberately if you wanted to. So you could do something along the lines of putting some kind of a spacer material between the mating surfaces and deliberately increase the gap between the core halves and that'll move performance out to higher frequencies. Um, some manufacturers 
don't grind that gap. So there'll be kind of a pretty significant difference between a split core and a solid core. Ours, they're fairly similar. And the, the difference, by the way, is lower frequency materials, you'll notice the difference more than in higher frequency materials. Something like 61 being pretty low permeability, that small amount of permeability of one air gap in there doesn't move the needle as much. <laughs> doesn't move the needle as much as if it were a uh, high permeability material like 75. That you might see, you know, the perm of 5,000 drop down to something like 3,000 or 2,000, depending on how not so nice that core is mating to the other one. Last question. <laughs> Does the power handling increase with frequency? It can. A little bit. So the power handling of a ferrite core speaking about it in a power application is going to be related to the losses that the core incurs. So the losses on a material for the most part are going to go up with frequency, but the flux density of the material, so keeping all other things equal, the flux density of the material is going to go down as frequency increases. So you may get into a scenario that the flux density is decreasing faster than the losses at a given flux density or a given frequency flux density combo are increasing. So to a point, most materials, what you'll see is they'll get, they'll be able to handle more power up to some certain point by increasing frequency, and then they will start dropping back down again. Uh, a good way, a good graph to look at. Um, some manufacturers have it. We have it in some literature is a graph called performance factor. So that's a pretty good metric for looking at relative power handling over frequency of different materials. They'll have, you know, some peak at some frequency for each material after which it'll drop off. And hopefully there's a, another material that does better than it. Um, so kind of, okay. but not as like a hard and fast rule. Like you don't just increase frequency and your power handling goes up because the core does that can explode. <laughs> does that, uh, curve that you said that is that on our website? I think so. It should be. It's in some of our, our papers and literature. I know that. Okay. I don't then... know if it's on our website specifically. But it probably will be by the time this video is up. We'll put it in the bio. Um, all right. Well, that's the three questions. These questions came from YouTube comments. So if you want to have any of your questions answered in a video, please comment below. We will also be putting in the bio a link to download the USA frequency chart that Ferret created. Um, we have it available in print that we can mail to you, or you could download it to your computer. Um, and it's really cool and exciting. But uh, Get both. Yeah. Make it your desktop make background. It your, make it your whole background. Like, we should have hung one up. Um, all right. Well, that's all we have. So, thanks. Bye. Bye.